boys and girls. I'm so glad that you tuned in today to hear another Bible story. And today's story is going to be about Noah. And his story is quite at the, at the front of the Bible, like not right at the beginning, but a little ways in. And it's something, it's a story that is just so exciting. So I'm going to tell you it today. So a long, long time ago, in the days of Noah, God looked down on the world and he saw that it was a terrible place. Almost all the people were mean and bad. They were always fighting and hurting each other and they never listened to what God told them to do. When God saw how evil everyone had become, he felt sad that he had even made them. So God decided to send a great flood, which means that there would be water like gushing everywhere to wash away all the bad things on earth. But there was one man that loved God and his name was Noah. And Noah also had a wife and three sons and they had wives and they all loved God and did what he said. So one day God said to Noah, because the people here are so bad, I'm going to bring a great flood to destroy the whole earth and everything living on it. But I want you to build an ark to keep you and your family safe. Now, ark is another word for a really, really, really big boat. So God said, I also want you to bring two of every kind of animal onto the ark along with enough food for you and your family and all the animals. So God, or Noah thought, whoa, this is a big job. It's a good thing he had three sons to help him too, right? So Noah began to build the ark just the way that God told him. It was a huge boat, huge. You probably have never seen a boat that big, big enough to hold Noah's family and two of every animal on the earth that walks, creeps, flies, or crawls. God told Noah to build the ark with three decks, so three layers, and lots of different rooms on each deck, so Noah's family and all the animals would have a nice place to stay. What a huge job! But Noah and his sons, they started Tap, tap, bang, 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 boom. Noah and his sons sawed and pounded and lifted and pushed. And day by day, that ark got bigger and bigger. So Noah's neighbors, they would come by and they could hardly believe what they were seeing. There wasn't any water around anywhere. And they'd say, old Noah's really lost it. Like they were thinking maybe he's gone crazy. Does he really think there's going to be water for that big boat to float? What a joke! But Noah didn't listen to them. He kept listening to God and he kept right on working. When the ark was almost finished, Noah's family started gathering enough food for them all. They needed stacks and stacks and stacks of food to feed themselves and all the animals. They just think how much an elephant would eat in one day. And they were going to need it for a lot more than just one day. It was going to be a long time. So after months of building the huge ark, finally it was ready. And God said to Noah, go inside the ark, you and your whole family. Seven days from now, I'm going to have the rain start coming. It will come from above and it's also going to come from below. Like there's going to be water everywhere and it is going to cover everything because it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. So Noah and his family hurried to finish packing all the food and supplies and they went into the ark just like God had said. Then God did something amazing. Way off in the distance, Noah could see the animals heading toward the ark. God sent the animals to Noah two by two, and what a parade it was. It was a good thing Noah didn't have to go and find all these animals. God just brought them all. So what's your favorite animal? Is it a monkey, or a pig, or an elephant? 
Anyways, all the animals started coming onto the ark. Grrrr, called the lions as they marched in line. Hee-haw, laughed the little donkeys coming behind. Bah, cried the fleecy lambs, woolly and white. The monkeys rode on elephants and they hung on tight. Then the ducks came waddling with their loud quack quacks. Next came a pair of pigs with pigeons on their backs. Bears, hippos, chickens, giraffes, tigers and zebras and dogs. Possums, ponies, kittens and seals and a pair of jumping frogs. On and on the animals came marching right up to the ark. And when they were all safely aboard, the sky began to turn dark. The ark was filled right up to the brim. You couldn't squeeze in another animal more. And then, just as it started to rain, God closed the door. So I don't know, you probably can't see very well in the book here, but there's just like animals way here and over here, and there's just a huge line of them. All right. So here we kind of see if we could see inside of the ark, this is what it would look like. Plop, plippity plop, the first big raindrops splashed down to the roof of the ark. Then as the rain came harder and faster, little pools of water formed on the ground. A fierce wind blew dark storm clouds across the blackening sky and just driving rain just came pelting down on the earth. The wild wind howled and giant crashes of thunder rocked the ark as flashes of lightning tore across the sky. Maybe Noah and his family were a little bit afraid, but they knew that God was looking after them. So then they just realized that it was safer to be right where God told them to be than to be outside because it was not safe at all to be outside the ark. The rain just kept pouring and pouring and pouring as the water rose, the ark began to float. Rivers and lakes ran together to form oceans. Higher and higher, the water rose until only the tips of the mountains showed. Soon, those were gone too. They were covered with water. But inside the ark, everyone was safe and dry. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, God watched over Noah's family and all the animals as the ark floated, floated, floaty, floated safely on top of the watery world. Everywhere Noah looked out of the ark, there was nothing but water. But then one day, the flood water started to go down. Mountain tops were peeking above the waves. Then, thunk the ark bumped against a mountainside and there it stopped little by little the flood waters trickled away soon trees and plants began to appear Noah sent out a dove to see what it could find when Noah sent the dove out again oh the Noah at fir the first dove only brought Noah a branch from an olive tree then after a while, Noah sent out another dove, but it didn't come back at all. Then Noah knew that the dove had found a place to make its home and that it was time for everyone to leave the ark. Noah opened the heavy door and all the animals and the people came pouring out. I bet they were glad to be outside again because they were in that ark for a long time. It felt so good to walk on dry ground again. The animals stretched and wiggled and hopped and jumped and scampered all over the place. Noah looked all around. The earth looked so new and fresh and clean and green. Noah then built an altar to thank God for keeping his family safe. As Noah's family gave thanks, God put a shimmering rainbow in the sky and God said the rainbow is a reminder of the agreement I made with every living thing that I will never again send that much water to destroy the earth so when you see a rainbow shining in the clouds remember that God is in charge of everything that happens 
and that God keeps his promises. Right? So long, long time ago, God kept his promises to Noah and God doesn't change. He still keeps his promises. He still is in control of, of what's going on in the world. Even though things are sometimes feeling like they're kind of crazy and upside down, God is still taking care of us because God always loves us and he always keeps his promises to us. So we can always trust him and know that he's going to take care of us. Well, let's pray, okay? Dear God, thank you for the story of, Mo of Noah. Thank you that you took such good, good care of him and his family and all the animals. And thank you that you give us a reminder whenever we see a rainbow of how loving and faithful you are. Help us to always remember how much you love us. And we just thank you for that you love us so much and help us to love you and love others more. Praise in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, boys and girls, I'm glad I had this chance to tell you the story, and I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.